All right, in this Facebook groups episode, we're gonna be talking all about engagement, how you get engagement, how you have an engaged group, how you to build this community that is thriving because it's really not fun when you have a community and nobody is engaging. So right off the top, I wanna to talk about three main areas and then we're gonna get into engagement ideas, the practical ideas, but those ideas only work when you understand kind of the why behind engagement, when it works, when it doesn't work. So number one thing that you have to stand understand, we talk about this a lot, is why is your audience there? What do they care about? Because oftentimes in marketing and communication, if you're having an engagement obstacle where you're like, hey, we're doing all this and nobody seems to care, nobody is engaging, it's because you're talking about what matters to you and not what matters to your audience. Okay, that's a, a thing that I think needs to settle in. You're like, oh, light bulb's going off. So let me just do this a uh, real practical example. If you went to a party and you were at the party for three hours and then you went home, and you're like, no one really was engaged. No one seemed to want to talk to me. I was trying to start a conversation and nobody seemed to care. It's probably because you entered conversation and you just talked about all about yourself, what you really cared about. But what they teach you in relationships is if you're trying to spark up a conversation with somebody, you need to find immediately what do they care about? So if you're talking to me and you stumble upon that I love soccer, I like to duck hunt, I'm an archer, I like, like to go uh, bow hunting, we could talk for hours on those things. So again, the first part of engagement is if you're making the mistake where you're talking only about what you care about, what Brian Regan, one of my favorite comedians calls a me monster. If you're being a me monster, you're not going to get engagement. You're going to be very alone at the party wondering why nobody wants to engage with you. However, if you start from the perspective of who is our audience, what do they care about, and you start the conversation there, you will get an engaged conversation which will bring back around to eventually talking about what you care about, okay? Uh, so that's the first step you gotta understand about engagement because it's the key to making all the strategies work. Without that, nothing works. The second one we've talked a lot about, but you gotta reinforce this, especially with Facebook groups, There's a, it's a big difference from one to many, a megaphone approach to the many to many. So if you're approaching your group like it's a megaphone, like, hey, we got one person, I am the leader, I am the king of this group, listen to me, you're not going to have an engaged group. However, if you're setting the stage, you're creating a stage for a party, People will love that, but it's the many to many. It's a different mindset than most churches and most pastors are used to because we love control. We love give one person the megaphone, but that doesn't work with community and groups. It's different. You are setting the stage and allowing many to many conversations to go on. So you, again, if you haven't turned that mindset, really your group isn't going to be engaged. And then the number three is you are going to need to support your community with systems, processes, campaigns, culture, and leadership. Those things, if you get those in place, and we talk a lot about through this course, it's going to help your uh, community really thrive. And in these ideas, I'm going to give you some that kind of tie back into how you create systems and campaigns and processes and culture. Uh, we have a lot of downloads inside this course that point to that, like how you create onboarding and guidelines and kind of those culture things, how you create systems uh, to in order to drive back engagement. So you're gonna wanna check out the downloads for all that, give you examples from other churches and what we recommend on that. But I don't wanna spend too much time because you'll see that throughout the rest of the course and throughout these ideas. So let's jump into the engagement ideas. I've got nine ideas for you. If you're just kind of getting stuck, you're like, hey, we've got all that. We understand all that, but we just need some ideas to get the engagement going. Uh, here would be the ideas. Idea number one, we've talked a lot about this, uh, seasons and series. So if you're trying to do something totally different than what the church is going, where they're naturally going, you're going to find your overwhelming people because people can only mentally and uh, in community kind of juggle so much, which is why it makes this idea of what is your church trying to accomplish in this season or in the series? And then let your group be a part of that, not something different. It's, if you've ever walked into a restaurant and just seen an, a menu that is like 30 pages long, you're just over, overwhelmed and you're like, hey, just bring me something, I don't care. 
So when you simplify and you say, hey, as a church, this is what we're doing right now, and the group is a part of that, you will find people have more mental capacity, more relational capacity to engage because it's what the church is doing. So what you're doing on a weekend is the same thing that you're doing throughout the week uh, in your group. So think through how can we use this season or this series uh, and, and our group to carry on the conversation about this, not carry on a totally different conversation. And you'll find you get much more engagement because you have a focus in a simplicity. Number two is empower leadership. If you're trying to do it or you have like one or two people that are trying to run a community all on your own, it's going to be overwhelming. And eventually it's going to really choke off life-giving community because great community, you set the stage, you raise up leaders, you empower moderators and admins to help develop a thriving community as opposed to just saying, I've got to control everything. That will kill a community. Number three is do a welcome campaign. So if you're getting emails and phone numbers, it, it, most uh, churches could put people into a campaign where we do this uh, in our group for the next 100 days, you're automatically, when you join the group, gonna get emails that drive you back to great content in the group. So it's going to continue to increase the engagement. That's kind of a system or a process that naturally will keep driving back to the group. So you enter, now you're gonna be in a campaign. That campaign's gonna encourage you to engage in a post, to create your own post, uh, to wh whatever it is, share and engage. So it's a system that drives engagement. Some a su super simple thing that you can do uh, that you set it up once, do the work once, and everybody joining the group will consistently be engaged, which when they re-engage, then Facebook continues to show them more posts from the group because they're engaged. So it's kind of momentum begets more momentum in positive, which is great, or if you're not careful, negative. So if they aren't engaged, then Facebook's not gonna show them posts from your group uh, and it's gonna go the other way on you. So anything that you can do with the system or process to drive that engagement, you're going to get more momentum. But once you start getting that negative momentum, it can be hard to turn that around. Number four is you could consider doing a learning unit inside uh, your group. So if your group is topical, if your group is about leadership, if your group, if even do this with a, se a season or a series that you're in, right, where people could go through step by step and do progress, answer questions, have comments and conversations around a unit. If they uh, want to become a small group leader, right? You could have a group for that and they could go through a, a unit. If they want to become a men member or a partner or you want to do kind of like a your 101, 201, 301, you could do all of that inside your group where you could track people's progress. It, it's a great way if each step in the unit has some sort of question that they answer because that drives conversation. It drives a lot of comments and engagement in the group. There's so many different ways you could use learning units. That's number four. Number five is get feedback. Have fun with this. Facebook does this with a lot of times with polls. This is a great way. You know, you could say, hey, Father's Day is coming up. You guys want to do uh, donuts or you want to do waffles. You want to do bacon. You want to do popcorn. You want to do root beer. Like have fun with it. Polls are a simple way uh, to get feedback, which if you're getting feedback that actually is making a difference, like, hey, what, um, what series do you want to do next? Or not that you have to always ask everything, but in a strategic time, you could say, hey, what are the top questions that your friends have about God, right? Now you can have a poll. So you're getting this engagement where that engagement is actually going to drive what you're doing as a church. So people now have ownership in what you're doing and what you're doing moving forward. That's number five is engagement and especially do some polls. Number six is stories. If you're using your group to share stories and praise reports and life change testimonies and updates from missionaries and, and life groups and whatever you're doing, like just flood that thing with stories. People love uh, stories. So the more stories that you can have, it's going to push the church forward, but it's also a great way to get a ton of engagement. Uh, and it's a great outlet to share all that as testimonies are coming in. Do those inside your group. Number seven, devotionals. Uh, why not throughout the week have different leaders uh, be able to share devotionals and it could tie back into the sermon that you're or sermon series that you're going through. So it's going to carry on that conversation where the church is going to help facilitate the devotional life of the people, show people what it's like to study the Bible, go through it together and then encourage them, whatever your maybe discipleship program is, like get into small groups, right? So uh, you can do devotionals and, and ask people, hey, what was your takeaway from the message? Uh, what is one thing that you're working? 
working on and encourage people and pray for people on that, which leads me to number eight idea is prayer. Uh, people need prayer and a group is a great way to get uh, prayer requests, share praise reports. Uh, we're going to talk like functionally how you don't get too crazy with this by creating kind of anchor posts. So in letting, instead of letting everybody say, hey, now we have a hundred posts on all we uh, can pray about if you create an anchor post like hey what can we be praying with you about and then drive all those posts don't uh, don't approve those say hey post that on the comments so now you have one post with a hundred comments as opposed to a hundred posts so there's some practical things we can do but again a great way to to get engagement actually have spiritual benefit from that engagement that leads to more stories and more praise reports uh, so if you do it the right way that can be great for your group and then idea number nine is interviews so uh, interviews let's say you're having a guest speaker coming in like do a, a Facebook live into your group about that speaker and what they're excited about and what they're going to be talking on and why why people should care if you've got missionaries then the list goes on and on and on do interviews with key uh, leaders and, and uh, volunteers and highlight them and their story. People can get to know them. Uh, if you've got a ministry opportunity, you could do an uh, interview with that ministry leader and talk about how awesome the kids ministry is and, and what you do on a weekend and why it's so important and share some stories and then invite people. If you're interested, you can be a part of the kids team. So interviews are a great way to uh, get engagement and also move the church forward as well. So there you go. That's the key things that's going to make sense at the stage for uh, engagement. And then those are some ideas. There's plenty more ideas. And if you've got ideas that are working for your church, let us know. We'd love to share that with our community. Uh, so put that in the comments. But man, pick a couple of the ideas. Make sure you've done the foundational things. And I'm telling you, you are going to have a rocking Facebook group. All right, guys, God bless. We'll see you in the next episode.